Let's chat about the week 11 waiver wire. We've got some juicy pickups this week. I feel like it's been a little bit elusive the past few weeks. Some players that we really haven't wanted to drop it all on, but now... We're going to drop a low for this week's waiver wire crop. We've got some wide receivers. We've got some running backs. We've even got a couple tight ends. Uh, but first, I want to say that this video is brought to you by Mojo, and so are these free giveaway hats, okay? We are giving away two of the crispy BDGE golden rope hats. We only have two of these left in the office. Literally, all you got to do is download the Mojo app with the first link in the description. You can play if you're in New Jersey, but you can browse and use the app and look at any of the players on the Mojo app, which is the sports stock market. They attach a share price to any NFL skill player as well as uh, a ton of college quarterbacks. So it is awesome and it is coming to a state near you eventually. But if you download the app with the link in the description, you'll be entered into a free giveaway for one of the BDGE hats available on iOS. You can play in New Jersey. <laughs> Christian Watson. He is my number one waiver wire pickup of the week. The man exploded for three touchdowns with Aaron Rodgers. With Romeo Dobbs out for the foreseeable future, they need a number one there. And it is clear that Watson fits Aaron Rodgers' skill set like a fucking two-piece puzzle. It's a beautiful thing to see him connect with him down the field. We haven't seen Aaron Rodgers stretch the old elbow in quite a while, but it was uh, they made magic together, and I think we're going to see a lot of that down the stretch. Christian Watson was a guy that um, I said a few times in the live stream on Saturday, you should be picking up. You should be hitting hard. You should be stashing on the end of your bench because he looks like someone who could be an alpha over the second half of the year. Now, after Christian Watson, who I would absolutely spend my number one waiver on, there's actually like five or six dudes. I'm looking at my rankings right now, which you can go grab on bdge.co. You can become a big dog member, which has my waiver wire rankings. I have six individual players in which I would use my number one waiver wire spot on and six players that I would use over 25% of my fab budget. Christian Watson is one of them at 40% or more. So is Kadarius Tony. Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver who finally got to get onto the field because of Juju Smith-Schuster getting flattened. But Tony showed up, got into the end zone, caught a bunch of passes, was involved in the run game. He will be continued to get involved on the goal line. And now, if Juju misses time, Tony's going to be a big part of this offense. He's obviously only there for a very limited amount of time, and he will become more and more acclimated with the offense. And him and Mahomes have a little bit of chemistry, and that will continue to grow, and you want wide receivers attached to this offense that have upside. Kadarius Tony absolutely has that. They play the Chargers next week. This is absolutely a team that you could throw the ball. You can do everything against the Chargers defense, to be quite frank with you. Kadarius Tony is my number two waiver wire pickup. I would I, honestly, him and Watson are both tied. Uh, 40% of the fab would spend the number one waiver wire on either of them. They both have tremendous, tremendous upside second half of the year. And sticking with the Chiefs, we have Isaiah Pacheco, who absolutely ousted Clyde Edwards Hilaire from the throne. 18 carries Pacheco had in this one to zero for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. It has flattened itself to a two man committee pretty much between him and Jarek McKinnon. Now, McKinnon is certainly getting a lot of the pass catching work, third down work, whatever, and long work, anything that involves running receiving routes, most of it going to McKinnon. All right. And I expect that to remain the same. They, they pretty much showed that that's how they wanted to use him all year. So if something were to happen to McKinnon, Pacheco could absolutely play a three down role in this offense, but. That's not the case right now. So I'm not going to go crazy with the upside. However, he is my number one running back pickup for the week because he's looking like the starting running back for the Kansas City Chiefs offense, which is absolutely steamrolling right now. And the next four players are all running backs. Some of them will be available. Some of them won't be. Like Elijah Mitchell is an obvious pickup. 18 carries in his first week back. He's obviously competing with Christian McCaffrey. But Elijah Mitchell is really, really good. This is a really, really good run offense. So you want Elijah Mitchell if someone dropped him. They didn't want to wait for him to come back from his long, long injury layoff. Gus Edwards, same thing. He might have been dropped because they had the bye. He was injured before that. Kenyon Drake took over. Whatever. Some people needed room. They play against Carolina this week. So it's a beautiful matchup. He should be back from his injury and should retake the starting role from Kenyon Drake. However, I'm not going to go crazy because this Baltimore backfield has been an absolute fucking nightmare trying to decide who you should be starting in your lineup on a weekly basis. Um, but Elijah Mitchell, Gus Edwards, Rashad Way, I have all of them as priority pickups. I have all of them limited at 25% of your fab budget. Rashad White, obvious pickup, obvious target here. Leonard Fournette gets hurt, should be back after the bye week, but that does also mean they have a bye week. Rashad White gets over 20 touches in this game, first time in his career, looks really, really good doing it. 
We want to see him more involved in the passing game, but it's clear that he's got more juice than Leonard Fournette does right now. Uh, I would be surprised if he's not more and more involved in the offense down the stretch. So Rashad White's a dude that I think you'll be able to play as a flex starter sooner rather than later, even if Leonard Fournette is healthy. Same thing with Jalen Warren. He's kind of like a, an off-brand Rashad White right now, where he's involved a lot in the receiving game, but Najee Harris is still the early down runner here. He's still the goal line back. Warren is more explosive, but I have him down here 10 to 15% of your budget. Would not use my number one waiver wire bid on him, but I am uh, interested to see if they continue to give him more and more early down work. They gave him more early down snaps uh, in this week coming off the bye, as they said they were going to do all break. Um, and it came to fruition. He wasn't like heavily, heavily involved on the ground. I believe he had nine carries and Najee's like 20, 22, but it was more involved on a percentage basis than he had been in any previous week. So Jalen Warren is absolutely going to command a one-two punch in this backfield going forward. So he needs to be rostered, of course. So does Donovan Peoples-Jones. DPJ has at least four catches and 50 yards in six straight games. He has over 70 yards in five out of the last six games. He doesn't have a single touchdown on the year, and that is the problem. But he's consistently get his last six games, nine targets, four targets, six targets, five, ca- uh, five targets, seven targets, nine targets, and a lot of those are deep down the field. Like his yards per reception numbers last week 19.8 yards per reception 20.3 the week before that 11.8 18.5 he's getting a lot of valuable deep targets and you know when those targets are going to become really really valuable when Deshaun Watson steps back on the field in week 13 and he has an accurate deep passer outside of Jacoby Brissett delivering him the ball so DPJ has become somewhat of a little you know a revelation at the flex position and has started to outproduce Amari Cooper I don't expect that you know week in and week out, but he's doing it week in and week out right now. So he needs to absolutely be picked up. And I would put 10 to 15% of my fab budget on him if I needed a wide receiver. Same thing with Paris Campbell. This dude has showed up anytime Matt Ryan has been under center. He continuously dominates every time Matt Ryan is under center. Last week was no different. Got into the end zone again. Got a ton of targets. Him and Pittman seem to be the 1A and 1B when Matt Ryan is under center. So we like ourselves some Paris Campbell. Get a little bit deeper into the waiver wire lookout. We got Trey McBride because Zach Kurtz is out for the year, so Trey McBride will step in and be the every down tight end for this team. He's done almost nothing production wise up to this point, so this I, I don't want to go over my skis here because we do this a lot as a fantasy community. We look at a guy that should be a good tight end, which is like every single prospect ever that's a tight end, and we're like, oh, he's finally got his opportunity. He's going to break out. That happens at like a 20% hit rate. So he's a rookie. He's going to have to develop. We need to see some production out of him. Uh, they play San Fran, great defense against tight ends, but he is the starter, the unquestioned starter for the remainder of the year. So Trey McBride is my tight end one on the week just because we kind of lack other options. Um, Hayden Hurst coming off his bye could be available in your league. Isaiah Likely, I still think he is worth rostering for two reasons. One, it's possible Mark Andrews does not play again. They give him one more week of rest because they are playing against Carolina and they could see that as an easy dub. Two, there's a chance that they come off his bye and they're like, okay, Isaiah Likely needs to be on the field for 60 to 70% of our snaps because he's probably our second best receiver behind Mark Andrews. So two reasons why you need to be owning him. Uh, Foster Moreau and Jawan Johnson have both been you know, pretty good. Foster Moreau is obviously taking over for Darren Waller, who's on the IR now. Jawan Johnson just never stopped scoring touchdowns. Uh, so those are other guys that you could probably stream or use in the up, uh, uh, upcoming weeks if you need them. The other running backs I guess I'm looking at, Kyron Williams uh, made his first game return since, you know, that long ass injury he's had for the entire year. K Makers is dust. Earl Henderson is a little bit better, but also pretty dusty. Like you use a Lysol wipe that was kind of used and you kind of got like halfway down the fan and then you're like, fuck, I need a new one. And then you forgot to get a new one and you just left it half, half dusty. That's like what Earl Henderson is right now, basically. Kyron Williams, one carry, nine yards in his first game. Does have three catches and 30 yards, though. He seems like the best pass catching back. He was an awesome pass catcher at Notre Dame last year. So as much as I don't think he's a great runner, he's small, he's slow, he's pretty unathletic. He is really, really good on third downs. He will probably be their best pass blocker immediately, and he will be their best pass catching back out of the backfield immediately. So I could see him getting very involved, especially now that Cooper Cup is out for a minute. Speaking of Cooper Cup, we got to be looking at Van Jefferson. We got to be looking at Ben Skoranek. Um, Obviously, Tyler Higby probably shouldn't be available on your waiver wire, but if he is, he becomes a priority ad and would be the number one waiver wire pickup this week at the tight end position. Uh, Behind those guys, Jarek McKinnon, again, is really involved in the passing game for KC. So if you're in a PPR league, I think you could probably do worse than picking him up. Other than that, Eh, nothing I really like. OBJ, obviously, if he's still available, maybe he'll be on, on a fucking team soon. But every week that passes by and he's not on a team makes me a little bit more concerned and a little bit less uh, prioritized to go pick his ass up. MVS, if Juju misses time, MVS seems to be one of the 
uh, better options in the KC offense. Him and Justin Watson is also running a lot of routes, so we'll see what happens there. Michael Hardman missed this one as well. Should have said that. DeAndre Carter had a big game, and they play the Kansas City Chiefs this week. The Chargers do. So if Keenan Allen and Mike Williams both miss this game again, DeAndre Carter should be a dude that we are looking at as a flex option. Got into the end zone this week. Josh Palmer was the big guy last week. Both of them are going to get decent number of targets. Both of them should get, you know, accurate looks coming from Justin Herbert. KC, high scoring. Y'all do the fucking math. Darius Slayton's probably the last guy I'm going to touch on right now. Darius Slayton goes against Detroit, and Darius Slayton has been fucking hitting, man. That dude is chopping the stats up right now. He has been, um, a dude is not getting a lot of targets, and this is not a passing game that you necessarily want to attach yourself to. We've kind of been trying to figure out who we want, whether it's, you know, it was Tony in the beginning of the year and Galladay, and then it was Wondell Robinson, and then it was Darius Slayton now. So it's hard to find consistency here between these players, but Darius Slayton has probably been the most consistent player out of the receivers throughout a portion of this year, and he's getting deep targets. He is the playmaker down the field, so you put him in your lineup, he gets lucky on one splash play and that is absolutely in the range of outcomes against a shit defense like the Detroit Lions for week 11 so he's probably the last guy I will touch on I think we ran through about 20 players right there in terms of streaming defenses Baltimore against Carolina New England against the New York Jets New Orleans against the Rams depending on whether or not Stafford plays the Giants against Detroit and then Denver against the Las Vegas Raiders are probably my top guys that was a lot take a breath real quick all right well that's week 11 that's the waiver wire What do you guys want to see content-wise for the remainder of the season? We've got playoffs obviously coming up in a couple weeks. We've got the trade deadline probably coming up next week. Maybe I'll make one last, final last, multi-last send on the trade target videos. Um, But yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, obviously. We'll be covering fantasy football throughout the remainder of thy season. And do not forget to go grab that Mojo app in the iOS app store. You must use the link in the description. It will be thy first one. And that will uh, that will set you up into the free giveaway, but it must be through the link. Go choose Mojo. Go browse Mojo. Go have some fucking fun. Let me know what your favorite buy, your favorite short, your favorite long is on the site. It is literally the sports stock market. It will take over the world in a few years. I'll see you there. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you every day for the rest of my life because I love you. Bye. <laughs>